Brian Cody, very, very animated, and Anthony Cunningham standing his ground, and look, at, that's what happens in Ireland finals. This to tie up the All-Ireland final and take it, I imagine, to a replay. Joe Canning with a goal and eight. The pressure of the entire county Galway on his shoulders. He's got it right, he's put it over the bar! A goal and nine for Joe Canning. After the lapses, he had the composure and the confidence to step up and to take it, and surely now to bring the match to a replay. And the referee has blown the whistle. It's all over for the first time since 1959, when Kilkenny drew with Waterford. The match is going to go to a replay. Brian Cody, Anthony Cunningham, still with a few words there. Much of it to do with that last call, I think. But it all ends very amicably. And the two I managers. I don't know how amicable it was. Brian, Brian Cody was pointing they the were finger. They, they were smiling at the end, but the tension. I don't think I've ever, it's a long time to experience tension like that at the end of a game. And I'd have to say, just from a player's point of view, a personal point of view, I'm delighted that it didn't end with Joe Canning missing the free, you know, after he played so well over the years as well. He's been such a tally man, tallies man. And to then have the composure to knock over the last point. And I think a, a draw is a fair result today. You can see the relief, I think, from both sets of players. Look, full credit to both teams. They gave us a marvellous, marvellous match. A reminder then of the score at full time. It's Galway, two goals and 13 points. Kilkenny... 19 points. It was always going to be nip, nip and tuck and very close with Kilkenny and I think they powered into us there in the second half. We had a great start and a great first half but uh, maybe lost our way for the first 10 minutes of the second half and then rallied again and then they rallied and great save by James Cahill and drama there then a penalty and then a few good scores for us and um, it was very, very tough there early on, or late on uh, rather. So uh, we're delighted to get the draw. We were down going into injury time but... Um, I suppose traditionally whoever gets the last score has, has a bit of an advantage the next day and we hope it's odds. You're up against Brian Cody again the next day. You had a few words there over that disputed last free. It's just natural that you'll always dispute a free at that stage of the game, but should bring Brian Cody's a legend and, and you know they're 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 true gentlemen really after pitch and but they fight for their lives when they're there and you know, so do we all and uh, you'll be nipping took again the next day. I mean what what I thought about it, it doesn't really matter really at the end of the day. The ref, I mean the referee can't make changes for our team either. That referee decides what who gets frees and who doesn't get frees. I can't do that, so that's the way it works. Definitely is a free, you know, he played his early and just, you know, you know, you know, there's a, there's, there's, there's small uh, wins and gains and uh, that definitely was a free, but uh, and I'm sure everybody knows that, but and it, everybody would fight that it isn't a free at that stage of the game, naturally, you know. The penalty for Henry Shefflin, should he have gone for goal? I haven't the slightest idea, Claire. I never tell Henry what to do in those situations. He looked at me and I just shrugged my shoulders, you know. I don't tell him what to do in those situations. And look, if he had gone for the goal, had been saved. It would be a crazy decision in everybody's mind. If he'd gone for the goal, if he had scored it, he'd have been a genius. So we got a point to put us ahead, so that's fair enough. You never have Kilkenny beaten until the final whistle goes, but uh, you know we'll be trying our damnedest again the next day, and I'm sure uh, we'll turn up in the same frame of mind and one, one better. We'll, we'll go the next day with the help of God. Yeah, all right, let's chat about it. It's the first uh, drawn All Ireland hurling final since 1959. The replay, as you know, fixed for September the 30th. Now, the upshot of that is that the All Ireland ladies final has been put back a week. We've had a huge number of tweets from uh, people involved, very disappointed that the ladies' final has been put back, saying they've hotels booked, they've taken Monday off work, they've family flying home for the ladies' final. But we have checked it, and when the master fixture list was done at the start of the year, the Ladies Football Association was told that in the event of a draw on the hurling final, the replay would be on this date. So it was flagged to the Ladies Football Association at the very start of the year. Just to clarify that for people who think the ladies are being shoved aside, it was planned. Of course, it was the first finals drawn since 1959. Did you enjoy it? How good a final was it, Cyril? Des was absolutely brilliant. It was, first of all, it was a privilege to be at it. Great game, played by two great teams, fantastic sportsmanship, none of the shenanigans of the, of the semi-finals. Could have gone either way. Go ahead, a great first half. Should have gone in more than five points up. Kilkenny got a few frees at the end of the, to bring it back from eight to five. Then lost away for a while. Kilkenny had a great second half. Outscored Galway about 12 points to 1-4 the second half. Uh, kind of went ahead. Galway came back. 
Both sides would be relieved to, to have drawn it. Both will feel they could have won it. And yet, like, a draw was a fair result. But talking to Eddie, we were together on the line there at, at the match afterwards. It was an anti-climax afterwards because mm -hmm. there, there was no one to celebrate. Everyone was saying, was it a free at the end? Was it not a free? But you'd have the ebbs and flows of, of, of the game. And, you know, you looked at colossal horrors there today. Like, Henry Shefton is a long time around. He was probably the only forward that really played for Kilkenny today. Ear Latanian stood up today, showed what he can do. Joe Cannon on the side. There was great displays all over the park. But I think the pace of the game and the intensity, that the pace that Gaw we brought to it and Kilkenny, were, the, the, the cats of nine lives, they got, got rid of a few of them today because they just clung on when they weren't actually playing well. They could have actually won it. But like, it would be tough if anyone had to, had to lose it. I was delighted as a goal man, when Joe missed the free there and Joe Cannon, if, if that free cost Galway the game, I think it would be very hard on him because he's a, he's a brilliant hurler. It didn't cost him the game. So I'm really looking forward to the replay in three weeks' time. We'll look at everything in, in detail in a moment, all the talking points. But just on Cyril's point there, Donald, that um, Henry was the only forward re really to spark for Kilkenny. Is that a cause of concern for Galway the next day out? Well, I don't think it's a, a concern for Galway. I'd say it's more of a concern for Brian Cody and Kilkenny because in the Leinster final, you know, they were snuffed out. And uh, today again, um, the, the forwards, apart from Henry, who really single-handedly, as Turtle said, he dragged Kilkenny by the scuff and if back into the game and I mean he showed he, his legendary status in the game not just in yeah. Kilkenny I mean he's one of the top players that ever played but he showed his leadership qualities again today and but for him I think they'd have been gone gone they were, they were they struggled all over the field in the first half he you could see there he won a free early on he was trying to G them up he got three points in the last um, you know ten minutes before half time and that really brought him back into the game and his second half display was top class. So, you know, I mean, I, I think there's concerns there for Kilkenny that they have been snuffed out on two occasions by Galway, you know, the final and, and, and today. But having said that, you'd always feel that, look, you know, there's a bit more in it. Yeah. Both teams will go home and analyse the thing. Both teams will felt, you know, we left it after us to an extent, but Galway probably more so. OK, do you, do you understand the point of making that it's hard to snuff out a good Kilkenny forward line three times in a season? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we'd be hoping and yeah, from a Kilkenny point of view, but I think you know the more we look at it, and the more we kind of look into, go back over the match today. I think it's a very valid point. Um, you know, Henry Shelfman probably single-handedly dragged him back today. There was little cameos at times, but you know, a few of the forwards, you know, being honest about it, and they, they'll know themselves they didn't perform, and and definitely they'll be targeting the next day. They'll be you know they'll be delighted that they got a chance, and I think. In the overall scheme of things, as, as Cyril quite rightly said there, it would have been a shame to see a loser today because I think both of them gave, contributed to, yeah. to probably the most enjoyable I learned in a while. Should we be giving more credit to the Galway defence, though, if we're saying Kilkenny forward? Well, they have, and you know, Donald mentioned that there, you know, their, their defence have, have, have really got on top of Kilkenny twice, so I suppose, look, they'd have to go back to the drawing board. The, the brilliant thing is we have a chance to go back to the drawing board now. They'll have a chance to get, you know, get that, knock the heads together and, and regroup and come back the next day. And, I've no doubt there's a few of them, and they'll be, you know, they're, they're honest enough bunch of fellas that they'll know themselves. They won't need anyone to tell them that they weren't, you know, in the right, you know, they weren't performing today. They'll definitely be looking forward to the next day. I know if, if you were in that position yourself and a match passes you by, you can't wait for the next day. And often in all our finals, you don't get a next day, but they, they do in this chance. All right, then let's get some analysis and look at it. We're going to start with. Three of the big plays, three of the big talking points for Galway, so. Yeah, they started off great. They got the, they got the start they wanted. And it was a young guy, James Regan, that really came into his own. He wins, he, wins, he wins the ball here that he probably shouldn't win. It's a scrappy breaking ball, but he gets onto it here. Now, he actually beats, you know, he goes around three men here, does a lot of work. Now, he has a lot of pace, comes right through, gives a little pop pass to Cannon. But Cannon actually beats five backs here, not two, three or four. Sticks the ball, it goes across the goal, a fantastic goal. He shows his class there, and he had a lot to do. Look at him here, one, two, three, four, five, plays as a stick, and then goes across the goal here, bang, into the back of the net. That's what Gaul really needed. Here, Sir Donald wins this puck out. Plays it out, they're lucky here, it goes across the pitch, and it's actually a mistake when they kill Kenny Backs. It breaks down here, Nile Buck doesn't pick it up, but Nile Buck sticks a great goal. Now, he was very lucky there, days because, in actual fact, if you watch closely, he comes, doesn't pick it here, there's no problem there, but when he goes on with the ball, he actually doesn't play it on a stick at all. He lets on to play it. Look, watch closely, watch. Ooh, ref doesn't see it back of the net. You know, and he took a lot of steps. But like the other things that happened. Now watch this. Henry pops a pass here to Colin Finley. Nine times back in the net. Great save by Scale. Doesn't get it up in the first touch and then lies in the ball. He has to do that. But the big thing here is he saved a certain goal. It should have been that book from Galway there through the hole. And when the penalty came, like Cody left it up to Henry, he tapped it over. Now, that's a big thing. But he tapped it over because he put them a pint up. Yeah. Reaction to the goal there? <laughs> yeah, I suppose um, the you could, it was debatable the touch from uh, from Niall Burke, but uh, it wasn't the touch. It wasn't. But, oh, but, but, uh, but we looked at it. I think there was only five steps. I know as a forward, um, 
I give him the benefit of the doubt, but um, I suppose, <laughs> look, it was impossible for Barry Kelly to see it. Yeah. I think the 11 commandment for a forward is don't get caught. Yeah, uh, James Gehill, explain why it's a 21-yard free and not a penalty done. Well, it's just um, penalties are for personal fouls. Uh, that was a technical, technical. foul. Uh, whether he lay on the ball or picked up the ball, we couldn't quite make out, and I couldn't quite make out live, and we were close enough to it, but it was um, once it's a technical free, you know, you have as many people in the goal. As Great as save, like, though, wasn't it? Great save. Yeah. Um, if maybe, that had gone in, would it... Oh, that, that, that was, was the game was gone at that yeah. stage, because yeah. Kilkenny were on a wave, like, right, and, um, you know, Colin Fenley maybe, you know, not the, you know, if there's a man here next to me, right, <laughs> if, he, if he had got it he probably would have taken another step or two and bang into the near corner high high shot um, you know he didn't strike it that well but having said that it was a pressure save great save from yeah. Skahill and uh, you'd have to say did the right thing he, he went to pick it missed it and then you know the, the, the right thing to do is pick it up or lie in it but don't, don't give it away oh, yeah. 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 We'll, we'll chat about Henry and you, you have paid homage to Henry in a way now we're going to chat later about his decision to go for a point instead of the penalty but his, his general uh, influence yeah, in without a doubt today, um, this is the first half when Kilkenny were really struggling, that was a hard free, um, I chanced him with the, with the club once upon a time, it's not an easy job to take frees and I thought you know, it was very courageous of him and it showed, you know, he, he was tuned in, I suppose things hadn't been going well, but this one for me is the big one, he, you know, he came sprinting out to take that free mm -hmm. and inside his own half back line when Kilkenny again were under pressure, but uh, in general today, you know, he went out centre forward today for the, the elder statesman up front um, have, after having serious injuries and he took on the Galway defence, you know, created, that was a super goal chance he created yeah. over. But look, it's that's, leadership today, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, but that's what, look, that's what Henry Sheffney has done it and, and it's all been said and, and about him and, you know, you, you can't heap enough praise on the man. Right. But I think the more I kind of look back on it today, I think, thank God Henry, you know, done that today because there was three frees just before half time we seen one yeah, of them there yeah. and that was vital they were vital because instead of going in eight points down Kilkenny went in five points down and I suppose look if, if you had to have gone into the dressing room down by eight points the doubts might have crept in a little bit whereas you're only two pucks of a ball down right. then and I think it just gave them good confidence going into the second half I mean it, it meant that it was very doable okay. We'll talk about his decision to go for the point from penalty in a moment but five points down then Kilkenny but that's a great position for Goey, and yet they went missing a bit in the third quarter well, just after half time. Yeah, well, sometimes uh, there's when you go in at half time, a, a few points up, you know, you, you can lose a little focus a little bit. But, you know, David Buck there just turns, hits the ball, you know, to nobody in particular. Um, you know, it's, it's returned. And some of the Kilkenny striking wasn't great either, I must say. They, yeah. they just hit it straight back up the Galway. There again, 50 50 ball, and Brian Hogan, you know, was superb in the second half. He was recipient of many of those. Now he just belts it up as well, and Galway get it. They got a score this time. Ball off the break, right? And Aidan Fogarty got a point from from play. But you know, Galway had huge amount of possession again. Just flake it down the field. JJ Daly up to TJ Reid. They got another point from this, and um, you know this was a long range free that went all the way wide. And you know. These are heartbreaking when you're inside in, in the full forward line when you're struggling. Yeah, Joe right, looked frustrated you know, with that there, yeah. Well, you could see that, and this one, you know, that was a you know, poor enough pass up point from Kevin Hines, and, and I've done a fold with Richie Poor, point from Henry Shefflin over the barn, and that was an uncharacteristic miss from Joe Canning. Mm -hmm. to, sort of cut it, but I must say, right, okay, he had a poor quarter, but what character to, to come up for the last point, having missed an easier one, a fairly 